The easiest gunplay to fold the antenna on is the RG Impulse Servery one. This time we're reviewing the RG Force Impulse Gundam Spec 2 featured in the film version of Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Freedom. This is a variation series of the yet to be released RG Impulse Gundam, the Blast Impulse Gundam. Currently I'm working on the antenna in three consecutive channels and this time I want to finish it without any damage. The release date is the 10th of February 2024. The price, including tax, is 34,100 yen. The standard edition is 33,000 yen, so the price has gone up about 11,000 yen. RG number is 39. The mechanical designer is well-known Master Tigeraku. It's equipped with the common beam rifle. The absence of the Gelgmenaus railgun, which appears in the film, is a bit disappointing. It seems that it's necessary to divert it from the HG Gelgmenaus, which will be released next month. At a glance, you'd think it's just an inflated kit, but let's unbox it to see how it differs from the standard edition. The color of the armor has changed. Let's open Impulse. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's the instruction manual. Yes, I've unboxed it and laid out the contents. In total, there are 13 runners. Essentially, the runners are the same as the regular versions, but a light gray XA runner has been added just to reproduce the color code. Shoulder armor comes in four parts. The advanced and MS joints are fitted in two places. 17. The chest and core splendor. One multicolor runner has been changed into a total of three colors, and the clear sky blue part has been altered to light gray. Yellow has a smoky and astringent feel, right? The plastic is made of soft KPS material. There are two light gray runners. This time the white is slightly gray, making it a pretty close color match. The red has the tones between salmon pink and wine red, and the blue has more of a purplish navy blue. The black molding colors like the wings have a matte texture. There are also two runners for the joint frame. There are quite a lot of parts because the MS joint is only used in some parts. The Sabre effect is version 201 compared to the version made in 2013, SB13. The Spec 2's exclusive rear stick decal is included. There isn't much change compared to the standard version, but some of the words have been modified. Our instruction manual has been updated with a different atmosphere, not just a different color illustration compared to the regular version, the Spec 2 has a sharper eye angle. Different parts of the body's description have also been modified. Only the image position of armaments explanation has changed. The decal instructions are in color and set color comes in a total of 8 colors. There are surplus original mole parts and Luna Maria leaving plenty of actual figures. All except for internal frames and MS joints are undergated. Let's now assemble it and compare it with the regular version. First, some exterior parts such as shoulders are assembled in the state of a skeletal framework. Certain parts like waist and knees can't be assembled without using some exterior parts. The use of advanced MS joints is limited for recent RG and the main body uses it only in some parts of the chest. The other parts are made up of KPS parts. Each part has decent holding power and it has wonderful completeness. The structure feels like a mini master grade. Next up, Core Splendor. I quickly put it together. This is what it looks like when the main unit is docked. The inner frame is equipped with an MS unit, which can be used to activate and change to flight status. The holding force of the MS unit is also moderate, which is a good feeling. Deploy the four stowed wings and attach the missile launchers to the wings to complete the transformation into flight configuration. There is a 3mm hole in the bottom to allow you to use the display base. The canopy has clear parts that can be opened and closed. The seats are also reproduced by dividing the parts, but the pilot is not. There are also replacement landing gear parts, so you can place them on the ground for display. The next step is to assemble the fuselage. In the chest is an MS unit. The molding color is different, so it's easy to understand. The arm frame is multi-jointed and has a structure that can be pulled out, cutting the frame of the MS unit. The muzzle and V-shaped part of the chest are also color-coded with separate parts and the cockpit hatch opens and closes. There was no seating inside. The back would look like this if the core splendor wasn't in place and the space would be empty. Followed by the head, stick the sensor sticker. The face part is a separate part for the twin eye, mask and chin part. And the sensor has a clear part. The helmet is divided into left and right. Please note that the white antenna tip is very delicate and can break quickly. Even if it gets a little stuck, it will pop. The antenna is sharp and long from the get-go, giving it a great design that doesn't need any additional work. The ducts on both sides and back of the head are opened with slits giving a cool and sharp look. The head is connected by a ball joint. 
Next is the arm. The frame details of the elbow joint are finely cut. Please note the upper arm exterior parts have a front and rear orientation. The forearm incorporates a roll angle around an axis. The hand parts consist of a clenched fist and an open hand. There are a total of four types of weapon grips, including one for beam rifles and one for knives. These are attached simply with a ball joint. The shoulder armor is intricately partitioned with no visible joints. Details are modeled on the backside and the side ducts are open, making it a fine build. This image is a comparison to the regular version for reference. New parts are used, but the building process remains the same. The color scheme is accurately replicated to match the exterior of the thruster. The elbow joint's movement is naturally double jointed, allowing for flexibility. The forearm has a roll angle that allows for one full rotation. It may seem a bit easy to come off, but I apologize for a lack of holding power. The arm is connected by an axis. Be sure to avoid snagging it on the antenna during installation. The frame of the legs extends to the toes, and detailed precision is modeled even on areas that won't be visible once the exterior is attached. The part separation is quite beautiful, isn't it? The joints were treated with details or molds. The soles of the feet have an appropriate level of detail without any fleshing out. The toe can also deform and beautifully bends up to 90 degrees. As a moving gimmick, the knee joint has a slight locking mechanism that is deformable. This is the part that clicks into place. When you bend your knees, the knee armor slides slightly. Also, the bulging thruster can swing up and down. Next, the job and hip joints axis can swing up and down in one piece. There's no specific locking mechanism, but the holding force is moderately good. The rear is in two parts. The edges are made with fine details like the parts of the frame being visible. The side armor has two parts. The inside can be opened and closed to store knives. The knife is fixed with a pin and the size fits perfectly. The armor is all ball jointed, each moving independently, and the backs are lined with precision details. However, part of the knife is visible and there's a section of the meat hole on the edge of the rear armor. The place where the core splendor docks on the abdomen looks like this. Since it's fixed to the lumbar by the axis, it can be twisted normally. The legs are connected by an axis. And docking with the core splendor is done by removing the missile, folding the wing and plugging it into the docking form. By closing the claw part on the back, it's firmly fixed and the core splendor also bends. And the upper body is also docked. It clicks into place, stable and secure. Yes, for now I've assembled it up to the Impulse Gundam Spec 2. It's a degree of perfection that doesn't make you feel the transformation mechanism. We didn't see it in this state in the play, but the folding laser versus armored knife looks good after all. We'll also look at each of the silhouettes. First up is the Silhout Flyer. It's an unmanned aerial vehicle that's connected to the Silhout system. The mold is fine and well made. When connected, the connecting parts expand and shrink. Next is Force Silhouette. I assembled it quickly. The color reproduction by part division is excellent. As for movable points, the main wings can swing backwards. The main wings, the lower thrusters and the saber racks all have ball joint connections, allowing flexible angle adjustment. The upper wings are fixed and do not move. Here, with the MG, I was able to adjust the angle, but that's no longer possible. The small part of the vernier is a hatch that can be opened and closed. The craftsmanship here is also fine. The two main nozzles have precise details. Each can swing and move a little. The connection to the impulse has a unique shape that holds it steady and secure. Yes, the RG Force Impulse Gundam Spec 2 is completed. There is no difference in the design from the regular edition, it's 100% empty shell kit. The Force Chariot is quite heavy, but it was able to stand on its own without any problems. For reference, it looks like this when compared with the regular edition. When lined up, the colors are quite different. There have been no major changes to the color pattern, it's almost the same as the regular edition. The only major difference might be that the sky blue has been changed to light grey. Overall, the color tones have calmed down, and when compared with the regular edition, the Spec 2 seems a bit bland. Both are cool, but the Spec 2 seems to lack something without the rail side. Next, I geared up and struck a pose. The narration provides an elaborate description of the aircraft. The Impulse Gundam that was in operation during the previous war was secretly recovered by Erika Mons from Morgenlaufer at the request of Kagari Ulasva. In order to enhance the heat and bullet resistance, the battery has been replaced with the latest model and the colors change with the voltage applied when the variable phase sift drive is activated. 
It can also receive power from the Destiny Gundam Spec 2 through a Deuterion Beam. The basic gear is the same as that of the Force Impulse Gundam. With high-powered thrusters and large wings mounted on the Force Shield, the Force Shield gives a high level of mobility in gravitational and zero-gravitational environments. The aircraft setup concludes with these. The Excalibur laser anti-ship sword I carry in both hands is borrowed from the Destiny Impulse. The combination of the Force Shield and the Excalibur is my personal favorite. The volume and the fact that I'm holding it is really cool. The grip of the hand parts is extraordinary. I experimented to see if I could recreate the meteor lent by Ryaka Elsman in the play. I think this is probably the first time an aircraft with a non-nuclear battery has docked with a meteor. I don't clearly remember whether the backpack was a force shield or a sword shield, but by streaming the force shield backwards, I managed to dock it with the meteor without interfering with the body. I didn't think it would make sense to connect the impulse and meteor together. I don't feel out of place watching them move. It actually fits quite nicely. It would be handy to have a meteor for each family. Now let's take a look at the separation transformation gimmick. The transformation process is very simple. First of all, remove the force shield and connect it with the shield flyer. Separate the upper and lower body to put the core splendor into flight mode. To make a leg flyer, bend the knee joint and the toe of the lower body. Special joint parts for action base are also attached at the bottom. For the upper body, lift the chest and cover the face with the chest armor. Move your shoulders forward and backward to adjust the angle of your arms. Attach the beam rifle and shield to complete the transformation into a chest flyer. The joint part for action base is attached to the abdomen. This completes the separation transformation. There was no locking mechanism, nor were there specific positions, but the holding power was good, allowing for a stable display. Even though it's a quarter of the scale, it takes up quite a lot of space when separated. The master grade included a shield gimmick and landing gear that attaches to the knee and lumbar region were not included here. When displaying separately, it seems better to prepare a stand. Let's confirm the contents. The accessories consist of a high-energy beam rifle, an orbital anti-patrol Badra beam saber and folding laser anti-armor knife. We have various types of hand parts. There are missile launchers for core splendor and landing gear. There are two dedicated joint parts to connect to an action base. The excess parts include the original shoulder parts and a real figure of Luna Maria for her appearance. That's everything. I usually check the articulation, but this time I'll skip as it's a variation kit. But I made an exception for checking the kneeling pose as it's my routine. It's a bit sad that the movable part of the hip joint in one part doesn't allow for up and down adjustment. However, the range of motion is exceptionally wide. While there's a shoulder gimmick, the chest movement is also present. I think this is a well-made kit. Next, I compared the official completed sample images and my unpainted assembly. The color separation and reproduction of recent RG models is perfect. I also compared the realistic decals, but they're almost the same. You'll notice changes in the text when you look closely. It's already in the realm of spot the difference. All right, we've looked closely at spec two. The new runners used in the normal version of the color variation kit. So there's no refreshing feeling in terms of modeling. However, the base kit is well made, so I never get tired of making it. Plus, it looks so cool. Well, if I had to find fault, I would have wanted it to have a railgun. Maybe that was difficult because of spoilers, or it was too much trouble to modify the Gelgug Minas. Or is it the blast impulse I've been waiting for a long time? I'd like to patiently wait for the sword impulse from Luna Maria that came out this time to be 3D in the play version. That's my review for today. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching until the end.